Communication, as they say, is the key to personal and career success. An effective leader is one that communicates regularly with the people he or she manages. On today's episode of The Osasu Show, we will be speaking to Mr. Femi Adeshina, who is a special advisor to the President on Media and Publicity. We will be collating your thoughts via the hashtag Ask Femi Adeshina on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. And my co-anchor today is Mr. Anthony Ehilobe, the Managing Editor and Publisher of Breaking Times Online magazine. Take a look at this exclusive interview. In two months will be a year since President Mohamed Buhari was sworn into office. Uh, can you tell me what has been some of his achievements so far? A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. We will articulate them all when it's the anniversary, the first anniversary of the administration, where I can tell you that Nigeria is not where it was as at May last year. You know there were three key promises. One was we'll secure the country. Two was we will work to revive the economy and provide jobs. And three was we will fight corruption. There are many others, ancillaries of the big three. But the big three are those. Secure the country, work on the economy, and then fight corruption. And. Um, uh, 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 the achievements are evident. Let's, let's take the first promise, we'll secure the country. The president repeatedly says, you can't run a country except you have first secured it. Yes. When he came to office in May last year, we knew how Boko Haram was running riot, real riot. It is said that a minimum of 14 local governments were under occupation of Boko Haram. And when we talk of occupation, they became the civil authority. They planted their flags and were running the day-to-day the, the day -day activities of those territories. Today, not a single one of those territories. The U.S. government gave a contradictory I saw, statement I saw that it. they do, Boko Haram I, I, still holds territory. I, I saw it. So. I, I saw it. The you don't, U.S. government does not need to authenticate what is happening in your country for you. You, I, you and I live here. Mm -hmm. We know so better. So we know better than We them. know better. We, okay. we do know better. So you are saying authoritatively Boko Haram ha holds no territory. Authoritatively. It authoritatively. That they are, you, you needed to know what the situation was. It was they bad. had taken over the palaces of the MS and they sat on the royal stool and were dispensing. <laughs> I would agree with you. I don't know about Anthony, but I would agree with you that the Boko Haram situation was very bad before very. President Buhari, Muhammadu Buhari entered yeah. office. I think things have gotten better, but I'm not quite sure things have gotten as good as this administration has made it seem. But Anthony, what are your thoughts? Well, um, Mr. Fami, um, we recently heard a report from the senator from that district saying um, mm -hmm. that, from that same senator district saying at least three local governments are still under the con effective control of Boko Haram. But let's assume, and in, in happiness, assume your, that your, that your is Your thought true. is not complete, because the very day the senator spoke, the governor countermanded his position. The governor is the chief security officer of the state. But the so senator, he knows, the he senator knows represents the senatorial district. The governor has a helicopter view of the state because it's the chief security the, Well, officer. perhaps he needs to have a ground <laughs> view, but um, um, let's be happy that that is the situation, okay. and we no longer have Boko Haram. Why then do we need to be part of an Islamic coalition to fight terrorism? if we have dealt effectively with the problem of Boko Haram? Like I said earlier, winning the shooting battle is just a part of the war. So you need a, an Islamic coalition to win the war? You don't be so aggressive. Don't be so aggressive. You yourself, you yourself in, a, in an earlier interview debunked this as um, frivolous claims. You, yes. No, I'm sure it's not me. No, no, you, you, from your Twitter I, I, hand, you're very active on Twitter. Uh, yes, I'm sure it's not me. Which is, uh, which is I mean, very... I will not a, agree. A, a plus I, I, will okay, not, I will not accept <laughs> what I didn't do. Okay, <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's look on let's, the, let's, yeah, the president, the okay. president explained it. You have this coalition yes. coming from Islamic states okay. because you find that almost the world over, all the people who are causing this trouble do so in the name of Islam. Okay. So it's only fair. And you know you, you, have the, you have the allegation that Islamic leaders are not speaking out against this development. 
Now they have come with a coalition to, to move against that development. Now it's another noise. And the president has said, these people who are causing trouble are doing so under the alleged umbrella of Islam. So if there's a, an Islamic coalition, why shouldn't we then benefit from that kind of coalition? But the coalition says Islamic countries. It says no, no, no. Islamic Good. coalition against Good. terrorism. Good. So now, it's not Nigeria Islamic is countries. What does Nigeria have to bring to the table and what do mm. they require of us? I'm not sure that anything has been signed. Okay. I'm not sure. He's just made uh, a verbal agreement. Yes, yes. Okay. I'm not sure anything has been signed. Otherwise, if it's been signed, it will be made public. I'm not sure anything has been signed because it's not quite just two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, the president was in uh, Saudi Arabia, was in Qatar, and uh, these things came up. Okay. So they just discussed it with him, and he gave, he gave an undertaking. Then Nigeria will be part of it. So it's not as if any documentation has been done. And he has mm -hmm. said... He is doing that because those who are causing trouble are doing so in the name of Islam. And if the coalition comes and says it's an Islamic coalition against terror, then Nigeria should be part of it. Because and as a Christian, do you agree with that? Oh, I have absolutely no problem with it. You know that a lot of people make so much noise about this religion thing, the one, one religion dominating the other. No, I just want to be the best Christian I can be. I don't, I don't lose sleep over anybody wanting to dominate me with his own religion, no, no, I don't. Okay, let's move on, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so let's move on to our Twitter questions, our Facebook questions. So I'll ask a few, you ask a few, then we go from there. Is that okay by you? Okay, thank you. Okay, so Mr. Chi Go Go, I'm not quite sure if that's his real name, but that's his Facebook <laughs> name. He said, Dear Mr. Femi Adeshina, a lot of us f followed you from the days as columnist at the Sun newspaper. You did constructively criticize some activities of government at the time. At the risk of sounding antagonistic, are you okay with all the actions or positions of the present government? If no, what have you done in such cha um, cases? Okay, great. Now, when you are outside and you make commentaries, you make it from what you have seen from outside. But when you are inside, you have the benefit of knowing some things that went on under before certain decisions were taken. Now, it would not be proper for me to be inside and then be kicking against the same process openly. Mm -hmm. Because since I have the benefit of being inside, I can make input. I tell you that if anything happens now and I have reservation, I can walk to the president and raise it with him, that this and this and this. Can't we look at it this way, this way, and this way? Don't forget, I told you, you on this show. It, yes, yes. <laughs> that on the very day I, I resumed work. That's why you told me. He said, always tell me the truth. Okay. Always tell me the truth. If I argue, argue with me. <laughs> so uh, you, they say you don't, you don't live in room and kick at the Pope. I can't be an insider and government and then be kicking against that same government openly. If I need to kick, I kick in house. And I can do it because I have the liberty. Okay. Uh, Mr. Femi, um, I would like to take a question from uh, Amma Popin Orika one on Twitter. She says, um, I should ask you a question, that all the detentions of the DSS ongoing now, um, what do you think about that? Like we've had uh, the incident of the Ekiti lawmakers who were just presented yesterday. We've had uh, the incident of uh, Zagzaki who has not been brought before trial for 100, almost 100 days now. Nobody knows his situation. And um, all of this is quite worrisome to the Nigerian people. Uh, it would seem as if we are going into some state of uh, uh, police, poli a police state, just to put it mildly. But what do you think about this? And, and knowing that you were once uh, a critic of government and situations like this when they happen in government. Not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that one wrote the column and one made commentaries does not necessarily make one a critic of government. You can, you can advance opinion and all that, but you are not really criticizing. I, 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 I choose not to see myself as a critic of government. Even when I was doing what I was doing before, I just wanted a better society. Okay. okay. Now, I don't speak for the DSS. Okay. I follow just as you follow. Okay. The only, adv the only addition is that I am in, in, in government, a part of government. So 
I, I, I may have more information than you do from the outside. All I would just say is that the DSS is there for national security. And you can be sure that anything they do is to advance national security. So Mr. Yeah. Fami, um, most people would know you as a man that was connected to, to the people. Yes. And it is now assumed that once people get to Asurok Villa, no. they, they lose their connection. Uh, but of I, I, course, I, I, you can I'm say saying this off the back of the economic situation yeah. of people. I, I just got back from Edo State. And I can tell you for, for a fact, um, having interacted with the locals, that a lot of people are disillusioned with what they expected from this government mm. in terms of um, benefits, economic benefits, or at least even being able to put food on their basic the very basic essentials of life. Because they wanted magic. They wanted magic. And uh, this president is not a magician. He didn't promise magic. Magic does not last. Magic is ephemeral. Magic is make-believe. That is not what the president has come to do. The president has come to make fundamental changes that will be long-lasting. And there is a process to that kind of change. If they want magic, he can come and do all the gyrations and do all the abracadabra, pull a hair from a heart and all that, the club, and by the time they get back home, they are still hungry. No, we're not even so, talking about magic. Uh, oh, yes, uh, let, 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 let me anchor my thoughts. So, if a government had been there for 60 years and ran the country aground to the point we are, and then a new one came, and nine months you begin to make all those vociferous cries, then you are not being realistic. Uh, we, it, it Mr. Mr. Femi and Mr. Anthony, let's take a short <laughs> break. <laughs> and we'll be right back on the Osasu show. <laughs> Welcome back to the Osasu Show. Still with me is the Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Mr. Femi Adishina, the uh, publisher of Breaking Times magazine, Mr. Anthony Ehilobe, and Mr. Dang, Mr. Abdullahi Dang Dodo Dauda, <laughs> who is um, the taxi driver I met during my um, field work for the economic effects of pipeline vandalism. Actually, let's quickly take a look at that episode and we'll be right back. I'm going to have you sit down with me on the show. I will invite you to okay, my show. Okay, we'll okay, sit down okay, in my okay, studio okay, and we'll okay, talk no problem, because you're no a very no intelligent problem. man and I would like to tap into your okay, reservoir of okay, knowledge. Okay, no. Mr. Chidebere Ugochuku asked, if he has any good plan, I'm guessing he's saying if um, President Buhari has any good plan in setting the issue of Biafra agitation already. So I'm guessing he's trying to ask about the plans of President Muhammad Buhari to um, react to the issues of the Biafra agitation. Do you have any comment on that? Anybody that thinks he will balkanize Nigeria needs to have another thing. That they went to war to keep this country together. Two million Nigerians died. So if anybody thinks he will come and bring Nigeria, that person has another thing coming. And that's the position of the president. And that, I also believe, is the position of the majority of Nigerians, mm -hmm. including Southeasterners. Most of those who are agitating for the other were never even born during the war. They do not know the trauma of war. So they are just romanticizing the affair. They do not know that it's not a tea party. Anthony? I want to go on the issue of the president's response and timely response to issues. We had the Agatu massacre. Yeah. We had we had a lot of um, uh, Fulani incidents, skirmishes that have been happening. Uh, very recently, we had the issue with the rivers we run, where the president gave um, a marching order, which was very swift and very prompt. Uh, Nigerians have, ha have had cause to juxtapose this with all the incidences that have happened, and, and found out that his response was much quicker in the reverse incidents than to the Agatu response. And I'm wondering why the president, on such a level as Agatu was, the president has not deemed it fit to visit the area or send a delegation to this area. Now, you know one thing I've noticed? A section of the country wants a talkative president. <laughs> <laughs> they want a talkative president and it doesn't work that way. When the Agatu thing happened, we issued a statement. A statement 
with even President Wari said he will ask for briefings on the matter and it will be ready. But uh, so, some people kept saying, Agatu, Agatu, he has not spoken, he has not spoken. And I asked myself, what else will he say after the statement that had been issued? <laughs> and some people maybe are used to the style of the last administration in which whenever anything happened, the president will go there. But do you know that before that last president left, that style had be begun to backfire? They had begun to say, okay, every day he will go there, he will go there. What? comes out of it. But I think the people are looking more for empathy from the president. They I think the people feel the president is, has become very disconnected it's from the true. people. It's a, it's a perception. And, I think, and perceptions need to be worked on. I, I think those who have the perception, there is nothing you can do that will satisfy them. Oh, there no, are people to the contrary. Who, there, no, there are people who have entrenched positions and they are not ready to yield a shit ground. When anything happens and the president say has spoken on it, Anybody who wants to remain deaf to it, there is then nothing that can be done. But the majority has had. Empathic um, correspondence between the president and his people is not something that we must even borrow. It's something that we must grow. Um, the opinions you, you've, you've portrayed of the president, that the pres once the presidency has done something, it should be all well and good. I think the presidency should go beyond uh, what is the norm and do the exceptional, because we have an exceptional country. Um, don't you think that um, since people like you have the ears of the president, it would deem it fit? Because some of us criticized the last president on when the Boko Haram incident was going on in Medubi, we, we consistently insisted that he must, as president, visit these areas and show empathy. It doesn't have to be that way. No. It doesn't have to be that way. It, there are many ways to kill a snake, like you say. It doesn't have to be that way. Going there to visit is not the only way. In nine months, see the difference that has been made in the insurgency war. How many times did you see the president at the theater of war? Well, he went to Adamawa, visited some soldiers, decorated some of uh, the wounded and all that. How many times did you see him at the theater of war? But see the difference that has been made. So, results are what matter. So, everybody now, let's say that everybody now in this world, not say in Nigeria or in Africa, you know what's going on at Northeast. More especially for Noyobi and Adamawa, the crisis of the Boko Haram. So, we are facing many problems in that area. Apart from education, our economy, everything he has already, he, he, he has already spoiled because of the crisis of the Boko Haram. So, the reason why in our area, no good education, more especially in Borno. But we need the present government to assist our youth to go to school. We need free education. Nowadays, if you go to my area now, but maybe at Adamawa, Bauchi and Mugwebi, you see plenty of youths, they are graduates, no work. What is the next again in this time around? So what I need that, uh, Mr. President, please, Mr. President Muhammad Bahari, the people of that area, they vote for him, and then they die for him because of the life change. So we want to see this change on ground to employ our youth to go to school. We need free education in our area. If it is that we have an if it is that we have education, you can see our youth to go and join those useless police Boko Haram. Lack of education, lack of good work, lack of anything. So that's the reason why this Boko Haram was started. The Boko Haram was started by 2009. Everybody knows this history in, in Borno. The thing was started from Maiduguri. It's like it, he has already expanded to Yobi and Adamawa. Nowadays, Mr. Adishina, if I say I will take you with my car, go with Guri, you can follow me. What did you go for it? Huh? No. Do you follow me? It's a lot safer. You follow me? It's a lot safer. You don't follow me? No, of course not. There was a time that I wouldn't follow you because it would be suicide. But now it's a lot safer. You follow me? Don't forget that the Maduro Regal Boy was recently opened. That have been closed for two years. Yes, yes, yes. So, 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 the place is getting safe. So, what I can assure you, because I've heard the president talk about it today, is that when peace is finally restored, the direct aid, there's going to be massive infrastructure. Schools, hospitals, churches, mosques, all the things that are happening. Yes. Massive infrastructure. 
and this a, a lot of donor agencies will come, other gov governments of other countries will come. When the president went to G7 summit in January last year, they asked him to bring a shopping list. And what they asked them was to help rebuilding the northeast. And he said he didn't want cash so that uh, chances of misappropriation will be slim. What he wants is the same expertise and the same resources to rebuild the place. Uh, let peace be fully restored. That's going to be massive. That's going to be massive. We need the peace with the country because we don't have any country than Nigeria. Nigeria is our country. Even the World Bank is going to be involved. Yes. They are going to give Nigeria a lot of money at a very, very concessionary. Period. Is there a time frame to that? Is there a time frame to rebuilding the Northeast, to restoring peace? Well, I, I'm sure that when peace is fully restored and uh, uh, the, the first thing is that you demilitarize the police, the police will go in, restore civil authority, every other thing begins to function, schools, hospitals, and all that. And the process then. I, I am not quite sure that there's a timeline already, but okay. we can be sure that it will be done. It's just to wrap up the entire interview, I'll give you an opportunity to also make your closing um, remarks. but. The majority of the issue from our consensus collected on social media and you know from speaking to everyday Nigerians as well is that the president is going back on the, his campaign promises. I know he has mentioned before that did you see me make those promises myself? <laughs> it was my it was my party. But at the end of the day, Nigerians are really at that stage where they're going through economic hardships. The electricity um, has dropped to about one thousand five hundred megawatts. Let me go ahead. Into it. Don't forget, three or four weeks ago, there was an announcement that electricity hit an all-time high in the country of 5,070 megawatts. And there was the added promise that by December this year, another 2,000 megawatts will be added and it will be 7,070 megawatts, which we have not had in the past 20 years. Now, after that announcement came, some people went to blue installations in Bayelsa. We lost about 1,600 megawatts. Then they blew in Delta again, we lost another 1,000 megawatts, and generation dropped to about 2,000 megawatts. And then they said, How would there be light? How would there be light when you have sabotaged the installations? Then you can't pump gas, you can't do this, you can't do that. How would there be light? But many people see this as issues the president should have been able to foresee when he was oh, making really? the promises. No, they're just no, saying that the president. president let's human. no, let's try and look at the perspective of you know, Nigerians as well. They mm -hmm. see that President Buhari ran for office for twelve years. He ran four times yes. for president. Yes. So they said he should have been able to think of the issues that would occur when he's actually president. You can't make promises of having light and making a naira equal to a dollar. That's, then you get no, 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 no. You you have joined. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm not. No, I can't. No, what no, is no, it? No, 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 we know that, the president knows that, you know that, those were one of his, um, those were one of the things he ran into power, he got into power with, you know, by gathering uh, people who were right on the back of change, you know, changing their economic situations, changing their social well-being, changing Nigeria overall. So can you just give us your final remarks, number one, not to what we can look forward to, we don't want to hear any promises again. Can you just tell us the mind state of Mr. President? Is he willing to still bring change to Nigeria? Mr. President has no other way in the world except to serve and learn and serve the people of the country. And the only thing he does, he wants to serve the country, he wants to bring a very change to this country. Now, what can, what can the people do? The people can support him. The way he will have to stop me. And that he. To, 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 to encourage. It is only in this country that I don't see people encourage government. You should encourage government. There are lots of good things that are happening. Yes, there are tough times, but tough times don't last. Tough times don't last. I can assure you, at the end 
Oh, this is an institution. And it has to be glad that we get to one another. That's it for today's episode of The Osasu Show. Don't forget, you can watch extended clips from this interview that didn't make it on television on our website, www.theosasushow.com. I'll see you same time, same place next week. And until then, take very good care of yourself. <laughs>